Today on the Mountain Ann Show, we welcome TNA original Chris Harris. Welcome to the show, Chris. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Well, my first question is, you were a TNA original. Um, what was it like at the very beginning of TNA with the weekly pay-per-views and all that? Well, it was a di different kind of concept, uh, but we were all pretty excited about starting a company like that. Um, the weekly pay-per-views, Wednesday night pay-per-views was something different uh, that hadn't been done. Um, everybody was so used to the monthly pay-per-views. Um, this was a weekly pay-per-view that was going to be a lot cheaper. Um, and so we thought we'd give that kind of a, kind of a shot, you know, a weekly pay-per-view with no TV deal at the time. And uh, we had a, young, a lot of young, hungry guys um, on the roster that were just eager and excited to get something going, man. And uh, we, were, we were ready to go. What was your favorite moment that you had in your career? Favorite moments? Yeah. Um, just, just the levels that, uh, that the company went through, um, you know, the weekly pay-per-views were great for, for a long period of time. Um, then when we got our first TV deal, we got Fox sports. Uh, so that added a lot of credibility to us. And, uh, we were doing some uh, TV spots as well as going to uh, monthly pay-per-views. And then that, that kind of snowballed into, uh, the deal on the uh, Spike TV. So we got a, a great weekly spot uh, spot on TV on uh, Spike. And then we went to the monthly pay-per-views and, uh, you know, we would just build our TVs around the pay-per-views. So it was, those were just, some, those were some of my uh, favorite moments, just uh, the different levels of progression that the company was, was going and growing and uh, just, just seeing how, how great it was. And then looking back to see where we started, you know, it was just an exciting time. In my opinion, during the 2000s, you and James Storm as AEW were one of the best tag teams, if not the best of the 2000s. How did that come together? You two being tag team partners. Uh, just, just that uh, they were interested in both Storm and I, they just didn't yeah. know what to do. Um, so the, the end result was they were going to put us together as a tag team and kind of see where it went. That's awesome. Um, also, in 2004, you and Alex Skipper uh, had the infamous Hurricane Rana off the cage. Whose idea was that, or was that like improv on the spot? No, that was El that was Elix's idea. <laughs> uh, he, you know, he had this crazy idea. Well, he had. Um, he had, had kind of had a reputation of, of doing the hurricane runner off the top rope. Yeah. Um, he would, he would walk the, the, he would stand up, up in the, in the turnbuckle and walk the rope and do the hurricane runner. So it wasn't unusual for him to uh, perform something like that, but he had this idea when we had this cage match, uh, he had the idea of trying to walk the cage and um, all day long. I was, I was kind of against it. I didn't even want to try it just because I thought, the dangerous aspects of it for both of us. Yeah. And, um, and then as the day went on, you know, we, we, uh, we were kind of just looking to put it to the side. Um, but the more I thought about it, you know, we really wanted to um, make this, this match the, the best we possibly could. And so I went up to him later in the day and I said, uh, you know, Elix, can you really pull this off? And he had no hesitation whatsoever. He said, yes, I can. And I said, all right, man, let's do it. And so there, there's no practice or anything with something like that. I mean, it was just, we're going to do it. And then when we get to, to, the, to the spot, it's, it's time to go. There was no looking back. I still think it's one of the top five moments in TNA history. Yeah, man. I mean, we're still talking about it to this day. And, uh, you know, it's just uh, I, I'm glad that the cage match is still talked about, um, but that move in particular, is, uh, yeah, people that's people will remember that. Absolutely. Um, you know, you had so many great moments in your career. Um, and at this time, you know, in your earlier in your career. 
you, you always know you were going to be a wrestler or, or something in that, in that order. You mean like what, like a wrestler or a manager type thing or an announcer? Did you always see yourself as like a tag guy or did you always want to be a singles wrestler? No, man. The funny thing about it is, you know, Storm and I came up on the indies uh, separately at first and we were both big singles guys. So, you know, looking to see where we could go in the business, you know, that's where that's where our focus was and that's where our uh, dreams were. Um then we started working at some of the same areas um, and uh, a lot of times against each other um, and uh, had some really great matches. We had, we had chemistry, whether we were teaming or whether we were against each other, but no, when we uh, got hired by TNA, we were both kind of thinking to ourselves, you know, which is kind of crazy when you think about it, you know, you get an opportunity in a big company, uh, but you, you think, Hey, we're going to be big single stars here. And then, you know, you're going to be whatever the company wants you to be. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so like I, like I was saying before, they, they, they knew they wanted us. They saw the talent there. They just didn't know what they were going to do with us. And so therefore they just kind of threw us together, um, had no really direct real direction for us and no real plans. Um, so that was when Storm and I kind of took over. We looked at it like, you know, you know, this is the opportunity that they're going to give us. We're going to run with it. And we are going to do what we have to do to be the best tag team out there. So from then on, it was, it was gung ho. We were a tag team and we were going to take this as far as we could. Uh, what do you think about a talent now? If AEW is an auto guy, what do you think about a talent they have now compared what do you think about the tag, the tag teams? Team talent now, yeah. With yeah. like AEW has an amazing tag team division. So does Impact right now, too. I think right now uh, we're, we're back into that, that, that uh, level of, yeah, there's some great tag teams out there. Um, I think one of the reasons we got the attention we did and we took notice is because back in 02, 03, 04, those, those years, um, there, there really wasn't a whole lot going on in the tag team division because uh, ECW was done, WCW was done. The only game out there before TNA was WWE. And if you look back at those, th that era, uh, that was just a bunch of tag teams that they took two singles guys and were putting them together. They'd have a run for – a couple months, they'd split them up and they'd be feuding. So there, there was just the, the, the art of tag team wrestling just had kind of fallen off. And uh, that's one of the reasons I think Storm and I got so much attention. We, uh, when we teamed up, you know, we, we kind of went back to, to our roots and, you know, the tag teams that we had watched coming up in the business, you know, we just uh, – studied them and uh, kind of applied that to what we were doing. And it was, it was, we were old school guys. So we looked at old school tag team wrestlers and just applied that. And people were like, man, this, these are some good tag team matches. And uh, so it got some attention and um, you know, we kind of took, took, took the run there, but, but nowadays, yeah, man, there's some great tag teams out there. I think a lot of the companies, you know, not so much WWE, there, there's a few, but yeah, like you said, uh, AEW, they, they got a great tag team division. Impact has a great tag team division. Um, and, and, you know, now they're even kind of cross doing the cross yeah, promotion. Yeah. So we can see some great matchups that way. But yeah, I, I'm really excited. It, it's, it's exciting to, to watch some of the tag teams nowadays. Do you have a favorite tag team right now? Or is there any? Um, Two come to mind, um, being that we are old school, uh, the FTR man. They, um, uh, I, I really, I really enjoy watching those guys because they, especially with Tully in their corner, because Arn and Tully was one of the tag teams I watched. You know, the horsemen. Yeah. Um, so I really enjoy watching those guys just because they're not the big uh, uh, acrobatic kind of guys. They're, you know, they're, uh, you know, down, you know bones breaking to busted eye, you know, they're ready to fight. And, uh, 
Another another uh, tag team that you know, if we were in our prime, I'd love to mix it up with would be uh, Gallows and Anderson, the Good Brothers. Oh, yeah. I think I, I love what they've done and they've done in Japan. Um, you know, they made a name for themselves in WWE. And now they're doing impact switching over to AEW. So uh, they're doing really good too. But those are, those are two of my favorites right now. I see you have a picture of Kurt Henning in the background and I know you were really good friends with him. Do you have any great stories of Kurt Henning and yourself? Oh man, I got, I got so many great stories, man. We, um, <laughs> Kurt, Kurt was, Kurt was one of those guys that from the, from the, the days that I grew up watching, um, he was the guy out of that group that, you know, taking some, some new kid coming along, he really gave me the time of day and, uh, g- gave me, uh, a lot of his wisdom, a lot of his knowledge and took the time, t- spent the time with me to really teach. And I tried to absorb as much as I could with him, but, the best, the best stories, man, are just, you know, going out with the guy, you know, I mean, it's one thing to talk business during the day, yeah. but he, you know, he was kind of his, he did his own thing at night, but man, he would, he would uh, let me tag along and uh, we would go out together and he, um, he loved going to the the country Western bars. We had our favorites in Nashville. We spent a lot of time in Nashville together and, uh, had our favorites there. We would go out and he would just, you know, he'd be dancing. He'd be getting on stage. He'd do his thing. And of course he, he was, uh, he's known for his, his uh, Jack Daniels drinking. And of course he'd pass that along to me. And uh, There were times, there was times, you know, I tried to keep up with Kurt and there, that just wasn't going to happen. <laughs> uh, how, how important is that to you that to build that relationship? But a guy like that. That you idolized. Yeah. Guys that I idolized? Uh, no, how important yeah. was it that you got, like, you idolized Kurt Henning growing up, and now you got to hang out with him, go to bars with him, hang out with him, even pick his brain about wrestling? Yeah, man. I mean, I, I it's I'm, I, I was blessed to, to have, get, be able to spend that time with him. I'm, there, there's a lot of guys growing up that – um, you know, that were my favorites that I, I kind of patterned myself after, but, you know, Kurt was one of those guys that I really enjoyed his matches. I enjoyed his work. And then when he, uh, I'd known him prior to TNA, but, um, you know, we had known each other, uh, for a couple years prior to that, I first met him in WCW in 2000. I actually got to wrestling there and, um, but yeah, it, it was it was it was a pretty pretty cool moment for you know me. I, I look back at, at as me being the fan, looking up at Kurt and being able to actually have a, a relationship, a friendship with him. You know, being able to call each other on the phone and you know whether we were talking business or like I said, talking about the families. I mean, he he talked about his family a lot, uh, talked about his kids, and then years later, um, after his passing, I got to meet. Uh, Joe, his son Joe, which we all know is Curtis Axel. Yeah. Um, I got to hang out with him, and that was that was that was really cool too. I mean, you know, to be able to share that he he shared some stories with me. I shared some stories with him. We did a shot of Jack, and and uh, that was it, man. Uh, um, what is your favorite tag team match that you had in your career, and what's your favorite singles match you had in your career? Oh my God, so many uh, to choose from. Um, I guess some of my favorite tag matches, um, I think the ones that get talked about so much are the ones with triple X, um, for, for a couple of reasons. Number one, a lot of our matches was just real good wrestling, you know, uh, technical wrestling, um, whatever, whatever style the other was doing, we could adapt to it. We just really had good chemistry, but on the other, on the flip side of that, you know, when you put us, we had two cage matches with them. Uh, when you put us in the cage, it was just a big brawl, man. We just, you know, battled it out. And both cage matches were bloody brawls. Um, you know, we were all gushing. And so, uh, you know, the, the chemistry with those guys was really good because we could we could adapt to any style depending on what type of match we were in. Um, but then there's some other names, you know, later on that uh, we, we got the – got to ride with a little bit. We got to, we got to get in there and battle it out with the Dudleys. We got to battle it out with the new age outlaws. You know, all these guys, when they came into TNA, we had some great matches with these guys. Um, Singles, man, I had um, not a lot on, on 
TNA ground, but uh, coming up in the independence, I wrestled Abyss many, many times be before he was Abyss. Yeah. And we had some great singles matches. He was probably one of my favorites to work with. Uh, once I got into TNA, um, I, some of my matches with Jeff Jarrett, I got to wrestle him for the NWA title. Um, that was fun. We had uh, great chemistry, and uh, and plus, it, you know, me going for the NWA world title was a big deal. And then uh, even after the days of AMW were over, um, the matches with Storm, like I was saying before, we we wrestled each other in the indie circuit, um, and that just kind of transcended into TNA. So whether it was tag teams or uh, against each other, we had great chemistry, and uh, a lot of people remember that Texas Death Match where we just beat the hell out of each other. So. Um, yeah, that's some of my favorites, man. Um, you've been recently appearing on Impact the last couple of weeks. Can we see more? You notice? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I freaked out when I found uh, out because I was a huge fan of yours. Um, can we see more of you after this? I know Eric Young attacked you last week, but you definitely got to get your revenge, right? You would think, man, you know, anybody that knows me knows that I'd be, come, I'd be coming for some revenge. So, uh, um, yeah, it's kind of up in the air right now. We shall see. Um, uh, it was great to uh, have the reuniting with Storm and I. I feedback from it. So thank you for watching, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad you guys enjoyed that. Um, it, was, it, was, it was fun for myself. It was fun for Storm. Uh, and we would definitely love to do more. Um, now, as far as end ring stuff, I know a lot of people have talked about a reunion in the ring. I'm not sure about that. I don't know what you never say never in wrestling. So I, I can never turn that off completely. But um, I don't do as much of the end ring stuff as Storm does. He's he's uh, he's out there hustling and, and he's busy every week. Yeah. Um, so I, I would but I would love to do something maybe where I'm in his corner. And uh, I can kind of coach him maybe back to a world title sometime. So um, I'd be cool with that. I mean, just just to be able to partner up with the guy and be in his corners again, that would be that would be great for me. So uh, but as far as Eric Young and his uh, violent by design. Yeah, I mean, it's, we seem to have a good little thing going here and he got the best of me last week. So uh, it does sound like that uh, there, some revenge is about to, about to happen. So. We shall see, man. I mean, um, if it's not me out there, I'm sure Storm will have his hand at it. Most definitely. Well, everybody go check out Impact to make to see if uh, Chris Harris will be appearing more. And that's on Access TV. And then on May the 8th, you'll be appearing at Wrestling Universe Superstore in uh, Queens, New York. That's right. I'm glad you said that because I wouldn't have remembered that. <laughs> Thank you guys. Yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully there's more to come and um, maybe after uh, after so long we can do this again. Most definitely. It was an honor. Thank you so much, Chris. Oh, thank you guys. It was great to see you guys. Have a good one.